and we're back outside uh so we got this unit apparently the compressor was changed out but then once they changed it out they realized that there was a uh, stuck closed TXV, so I'm here to replace the TXV. Uh, so I'm gonna start with recovery. Um, it's just so bad I can't do a pump down. I wish I could. Then we have to crawl up into the attic, which is right above the refrigerator, uh, which is a total pain in the butt to get to. So we get to look forward to that. So I got all my recovery stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and get the recovery going because the place isn't open yet, so I can't get inside. So we'll do as much as we can outside first. And then uh, once they're open, we'll crawl up into that terrible attic, so. Here we go. All right, we got our recovery going. I always weigh my charge to make sure we have factory. So we're gonna reuse this refrigerant. So that's like a freshy, a fresh tank. Um, Cause it's R22. I believe that when they did the compressor, they put in a fresh charge of R22. That's why we're reusing it. All right, so we're done with our recovery. We got almost nine pounds and the factory charge is 8.05. So um, I'm just sucking out all the rest out of my hoses. All right, cool. So now we get to climb into the attic, but first we're gonna do a nitrogen sweep. Now there still might be a little bit of refrigerant left in there because you can never recover all of it. Um, so I'm gonna take the uh, shredder cores out and we'll be putting new ones in there. Anytime I open up a system, I always put new Schrader cores in. So. And then that's also why I'm gonna let nitrogen through it. So we'll be putting it into the liquid line and let it coming out of there. That way it'll blow out any residual stuff out of there. Okay. All right, so I'm above the refrigerator. That's where my ladder is. Um, so our TXV is right over there so I need to climb here and go over that so here we go oh, free step yeah so I'm gonna have to re-insulate this well just so you guys know it's super hot up here for the stupid refrigerator so apparently if you want to put the condensers for the refrigerators on the roof or outside you have to get a permit so they opt to put it on top of the refrigerator they don't have to get a permit. And then I have to suffer. Because it is hot up here. Ugh. So whenever I'm brazing inside, I always bring a fire extinguisher with me just in case. Better safe than sorry. Wait, what is that? What is that? Is that a bulb? That is a bulb. What the heck? What is that for? This is not the... This TXV has been replaced before. Look at that. There's another bulb. Somebody chopped it off. Crazy. So this is probably the, I'm putting in the third one. This is an adjustable TXV. I wonder if they just didn't adjust it properly. Eh. Oh well. Like I said, I didn't diagnose this, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a bigger one. So I hope I don't need additional copper because I don't have any. My neighbor decided to back into my work truck, so I'm in the spare, which has nothing. All right, cool. So we're gonna sweat that off. Uh, we already have nitrogen running through. I'm gonna do this first that way because I got nitrogen coming through here and then out through there. So I wanna sweat here first, uh, then I'm gonna sweat here and then here. That way I have a constant flow of nitro moving through. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot my wrench. No, I gotta go back down. Uh, well, I got wet rags. That's what I'm gonna use to pull stuff out. I'm not going back down there. So turn on my acetylene, a little bit of oxygen. That way we don't get that black soot going on. I don't need to be very hot because it's a tiny little cap tube. Oh, oh. Got it. Okay, so it's 110 degrees up here. Ah, 
We got our old TXV off, now we gotta put our new one in. I have a feeling this is gonna be short because this TXV, the stubs are ridiculously short. See how short that is? Yeah. So, that's awesome. Oh, and then look at this side. This side is a, uh, it's a fatter pipe, it's a half inch. So what I'm thinking of doing, I think I might, I think I might just put it here. Yeah, because this does not look like a factory rat weld. You can see there's a coupling right here. I bet you this used to be over here. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And they probably just cut it off right there. And then we'll just sweat it on right there. And then I'll have to make a new piece just three eighths to bend down and come out. So yeah, that'll go right about there. So you may be asking why am I gonna do that? Because when this was built, they designed it to be closer to that distributor. So I'm wondering if that's messing with it. I'm gonna wrap up this distributor just to keep it from overheating. I know I'm creating more work for myself, but I like to try to do things the, best, the correct way when I can, when I know it's the correct way, anyways. If you ever see me doing something wrong, let me know, because I'm probably just not aware of it. Like the fact that I came up here without some wrenches. So this is my wrench right here. So we're gonna sweat that right off right there. There we go. Anyway, we're gonna pressure this up to about 300 PSI, see if she holds, if she does, put everything back together on the inside and get the heck out of there. I'll have to go back one more time to fix that condensate drain, but uh, then we'll, if it holds, we'll replace this. And then uh, we'll go ahead and start our vacuum and go from there. All right, so we're about 300 PSI. Um, we're gonna let her hold for a little bit. Uh, while she's holding, I'm going to go up back in the attic and just bubble test my braze points just to make sure they're not leaking. I'm pretty sure there's no leak in the rest of the system because uh, I got more than the factory out of it. So should be okay. Uh, it does take about 10 minutes for the pressure to stabilize. So um, what I'll do is we'll go ahead and record that, taking a picture of that. Okay, and then uh, we'll see where it's at when I come back down. And then if it's all good, We'll go ahead and uh, put her back together. All right, so I'm just bubble checking all my spots. I was more worried about this one leaking. I don't see any bubbles. Oh, so far, so good. Seems to be all right, too. Yeah, I think we're okay. So I'm gonna start putting stuff back together. And then we'll go from there. All right, we got our bulb mounted on there. And we're just gonna wrap it up with some of this foam. All right, she's all wrapped up. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed to put this all back together. All right, we got the case back on. We're gonna put this Freestat back on. Um, we'll wrap it and then we're gonna re-insulate all this stuff. All right, we got her all wrapped up. Um, this is the filter, we're gonna put a new one in. And then we need to see if we can extract that so we can this stupid drain line. Oh man. So, yeah, let's see if we can get out of here. So we'll have to come up here one more time, but I'm gonna get all my junk out of here. And we'll pop, basically just pop a filter in there, extract that, glue a new one on, and get out of here. Alright, so we're at like 299-ish. Seems to stabilize while we're up in the attic. So we'll see if she holds. 299.3, 298.2, so I think that's the same. So we're good, we're gonna let the nitrogen out and get that line dryer changed out. Uh, and then we'll quickly pressurize and then start our vacuum. All right, we got our new line dryer in. Uh, so we're just pressure testing again, just to make sure my brazes are good, which I'm pretty sure they are. This is nice and easy to get to. I can see all the way around it, so. It's when you're in those tight, uncomfortable spots where it's hard to braise. All right, we got her under a vacuum. 
it's at 7,000 microns, 65. Once it goes under 1,000, I'm gonna go ahead and close the uh, ballast. So I currently have it open. Usually I'll leave it open until it goes under 1,000, then I'll close it. But uh, yeah, these uh, field piece uh, vacuum pumps, I mean, they pull. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and fix this. All right, so we can see here that our thing is busted, right? So you can get this extractor tool to get it out of there. So hopefully this works. Okay, yeah, that works really good. Cool, so we're gonna go ahead and fix this up. And I've already put Teflon on here, some Teflon tape. Get the junk out of there. Okay, sweet. All right, we'll get that all fixed up and then get out of this attic once and for all. All right, we got her all fixed up, so she's good to go. Now let's get out of this horrible attic and uh, hopefully our vacuum's done by now. All right, we're at 289. Let's go ahead and charge her up. All right, we've bled, bled our lines. We're gonna go ahead and charge her up. Uh, 8.8 8 pounds, I believe. So we're going to our liquid first. All right, so she's back up and running. So uh, anyway, that's how you change a pain in the butt TXV in a hot attic. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment to me at a horrible technician. I am. Hit that bell notification. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, pick up some tools from my tool store. Get some work socks. Thanks for watching.